this lesson, we are going to plot these two functions, more specifically, the normal distributions PDF and CDF function. And we are going to create this nice animation where we are projecting the area of the probability density function on the bottom to the cumulative density function on the top. And we're going to draw both of those plots simultaneously. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import all dependencies from Manum. I'm going to also use the normal distribution set of functions from the stats package in SciPy. I'm also going to bring in OS to run the command on the, op on the operating system level. I'm going to take the scene, I'm going to extend it and make this the projected area scene. And the construct function is what we implement to construct all of our scene animations. I'm going to declare my mean and standard deviation to be one, and I'm going to declare the lower and upper bounds of the plots uh, for the top and bottom one, the PDF and the CDF. And they're going to be within three standard deviations, so that's the lower and upper bound. The value tracker, again, this is a very important piece of functionality in Manum that allows you to interpolate a bunch of values between animations using a single floating point value that this wrap around that this wraps around. I'm going to declare my axes and oh and I'm going to declare the value tracker to start at the lower bound. The axes are going to for the x range are going to fall in that x lower f, x upper I defined earlier and it's going to have tick tick increments of 1. The y range is going to range from -0.05 to 0 0.75 and then 0.25. And again, this axis is for the probability density function, the PDF. That's the bottom plot with the bell curve. And I'm not going to show the arrow tips and I'm going to configure this to include the numbers. The CDF, that is the S-shaped curve that captures the area of the PDF. That is going to use the same range um, as the PDF from the X lower to X upper, plus or minus three standard deviations around the mean with a tick increment of one. And the Y range is going to show a full probability between zero and one. I'm also gonna put a little bit of buffer of negative 0.25 below it so, it so that the screen doesn't hug the X axis. And I'm going to use 0.25 increments. You'll, you'll notice that I, the way I chose those Y ranges just really depends on how much of the plot you anticipate will fall within the given Y range. So obviously if you make the Y range too wide, you're not gonna see the bell curve, nor are you going to see the CDF. And I know for the fact that the CDF is not going to exceed 1.0, because it's a probability. I'm not gonna show the tips, and I'm going to include numbers, but I'm going to exclude that negative number. I don't want to show that on the axis. And then, um, so negative 0.25, any late numbers with negative 0.25, which is on the Y range, those are not going to be included. And this applies to both axes, although I could have targeted the Y axis specifically. Don't have to though. Now I'm going to take the, those two axes, put them in a vector group, a V group, and then I'm going to arrange them uh, upwards. So it's going to show the PDF on the bottom, the CDF on the top. Uh, I could have done a down and flipped these and that would have achieved the same result. Then the buff, this is the number of units to put a buffer between those two axes. Then I'm going to scale to fit the height of six units. So I believe that that man by default has eight units height on the screen. So we're just going to use six of those. And we'll scale it keeping proportion using the scale to fit height function, both the PDF and the CDF axes. Now I'm going to declare the PDF function plot and its area. So I'm going to always redraw plotting the PDF function, passing the given X value and the mean and standard deviation, all of that to the plot function. I'm only going to plot the curve up to the value trackers X value. So I call value trackers get value function, which again, we declared all the way up here. And it's only going to draw the upper bound for the plot based on what the value tracker currently is. When we set that animation, this is going to create that nice effect of, of writing that plot left to right, it's also going to be blue. And by doing the always redraw, it's going to always redraw this plot on every single frame. Then I'm going to plot the, the PDF function 
uh, in full right here, just as a reference. I'm not going to actually use it, and I'll explain I'll explain what I what I use it for next. The reason why I want to include it is because I also need to get the area of I need to get the area up to a given a given plot value. So I need to have access to the full plot, even if I'm not displaying it, just to get the area up to a given X value. And then the range is going to be uh, from the lower to the, again, the value tracker's upper, fa upper function. And this is going to plot the area uh, for the PDF up to this value. The CDF is going to is going to always redraw in a very similar way as the PDF partial plot. So the CDF partial plot pretty much follows the same pattern, drawing that S-shaped curve, um, but using the CDF function to calculate the cumulative density function for that given X mean and standard deviation. Now that projecting dashed line that connects these two graphs, I am going to, again, always redraw it because the value tracker is going to steer steer this in between each frame and animate it. I'm going to call dash line. Its color is going to be yellow. The start is going to be the value tracker's given value, uh, the value tracker's given value uh, up to zero. Now here's, here's, the, here's the thing though, is that this line is connecting two plots outside of their axis reference system. So I need to convert those axis coordinates uh, for, the, uh, for the start and end of the line for the PDF and the CDF respectively. And I'm going to call their coordinate to point functions to convert the, the, the given X value that we're tracking and make the Y zero. So it's always gonna connect it to the bottom, the bottom of the X axis, at the X axis. And it's going to end at the CDFs, the CDFs, the CDF's X, X value and the probability value. So the, the Y value on the CDF, and that's what this is doing right here. So I'm passing the value trackers get value to the cumulative density function and passing it the mean and standard deviation as well. So I probably should emphasize one more time that the axes C2P function that converts a coordinate on an axis to a coordinate on the screen. And by doing that, we are able to get these two axes to talk to each other and connect a line between them. Uh, so this is one of the most powerful features in Manum, in my opinion, is this ability to take relative systems based on the axis to a point system on the entire screen. And this is going to be, this is going to produce that nice dashed line between uh, the PDF and the CDF, uh, connecting those two graphs. And then finally, I'm going to add the axes, those partial area plots, even though there's no volume in them yet, at, or there's, there's no substance in them yet because the value tracker is at zero. Uh, so the min and max of X are at zero. And then the projecting line is going to be all the way on the left side as well. And that's going to be a starting position. I'm going to wait one second, and then I'm going to simply animate by calling value trackers, animate functions, and then set value and set it to the XOPER, which is going to be the three stamp, which I declared all the way at the beginning up here, which is going to be mean plus three times standard deviations. That's the max of the X range. And I'm going to do that for seven seconds. And then I'm going to wait one more second. Finally, I execute the command for Manum. So I could do this in a Windows or Mac OS or Linux terminal but I'm just calling this straight from Python using the OS and just checking if this is the main, calling the manum, use it, use a 4K quality. And I'm going to suppress warnings. I'm going to play the, the result immediately, disable caching. I'm going to output to the projected area scene. This actually should be an MP4. And then I'm going to call this file right here, scratchpad.py. And then it's going to be my plot scene which is the, actually this should be projected area scene, not my plot scene. There we go. So I run that and this is the result.